So dental photography, I, uh, I like this picture because it really shows um, the level of photography that you can go to. So do you guys, uh, do you guys know this guy, Dr. Ness, Nestor Marquez at all? You know him, right? Yeah. So, yeah, he's in Mexico. So Dr. Borsov and I just went down to his practice the other day. Um, and so he's on Instagram. He's kind of a big name. And he's really active on there. And um, he grew up, so he grew up in Yuma. Uh, moved to Mexico, so he's a U.S. citizen, parents were born in Mexico, he moved to Mexico, he grew up in Mexico, he ended up going to dental school in Mexico, you know, just found the right people in Mexico and got trained really, really well in hybrids, moved back to America, so he lives in Yuma, but his dental license is in Mexico, so every day he drives from Yuma to Algodones, I mean, which is a 10 minute drive, but he drives across the border, he practices in Mexico, and he does hybrids all day, and he's really good. So I'm hoping to have him next year out here to teach, start teaching hybrids and stuff because he's really, really good surgically. Um, and so really cool guy, and uh, you know he's in, he's in Molar City in Algodonas. So I don't know if any of you guys have heard of that or you see that on the way to San Diego. And there's like 300 dentists in a square mile, in one square mile town. 300 dentists. I've been there. Have you been there? Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, it's really Science, fascinating. Yeah. About a mile or two. Yeah. It's wild, huh? You just walk across the border. Yep. It's wild. So it's a really cool experience if you guys ever want to do that. You know, he'll, he'll let you come see his practice or just go walk around down there and then just come back. Um, so we did that the other day and we, we went to his practice. We met him. We saw, you know, and he, he confirmed, you know, he, you get the bad stigma of Mexico dentistry, but he, and he confirmed, he's like, yeah, really, he's like, there's probably only five to ten dentists in this town that know what the heck they're doing. Um, and he's trying to help them. He's trying to teach them more. But he is really good. He's a diamond in the rough. Um, his practice is cool. I mean, we joked because he's got this big surgery room. He was doing a, he's doing a, you know, he's an implant surgery. And there's like ten people in this room for one patient. And I'm like, I'm like, how do you afford to pay so many people to help you? And he's like, he's like, well, they cost 150 bucks a week. So, <laughs> so like labor is so cheap that he's able just to like hire a ton of people. And I mean, you know, we all try to do as much as we can with one assistant, you know, because we're trying to keep costs in check because labor is our biggest cost in the dental practice, uh, but not there. And so he's able to hire a lot of people. So we were joking. There's just people doing everything. I mean, one person's just holding suction. Another person's squirting saline. Another person, another three people, when he says, photo, he walks away and three people come in and they have this lights and mirrors and, and a really legit photo setup and just, you know, takes these magazine level hybrid photos that just look really, really sexy. Um, so I took a picture of this because I just thought it was funny. I'm like, and this is just photography, dental photography to the next level. Yep, he's got a dedicated crew of photography. You get two teenagers that just sit on a computer and do, um, that do like uh, podcast stuff for him and, and, and website, you know, and just two teenagers just doing computer stuff in his practice just because they're cheap. And, uh, but it was just, it was fascinating to see. So we hung out with him and had lunch and saw his practice and it was cool. Um, so dental photography for, you know, we're going to focus on photography for our ability to set the teeth because when you come back and all you have is an itero model staring at you in the screen and you want to lay teeth in there and do a wax up, um, sometimes you're like, well, where do I start? Where do I put the teeth? And so that's where face scans and photography can help. So face scans are kind of more the, the global big picture, you know, to see, you know, uh, camper planes or oletragus planes and midlines and, you know, kind of the big picture. But photography allows you to see, you know, where's their exist existing incisal edge and where do I want to put the new inc incisal edge? Because everything is kind of based off incisal edge of eight and nine. Where does it need to be? And so if you have really good photos to start with, when you go back to the computer, I'll pull up my software and then I'll pull up the patient's, patient's picture next to it and then I'll start setting my teeth based on looking at the picture. Because the facial scan is helpful, but it doesn't give you quite the detail of like where does eight and nine need to go, you know, within the millimeters. It's good for showing, you know, occlusal plane this way and that way. But for setting like the incisal edge of eight and nine, we know that that's such an important aspect. The photography is really important for that. Um, so 
you know, you can get simple as snapping it with your phone, iPhone, or you can get, you know, fancy with studio lighting. Um, I'm going to show you what I found to be quick, and then Callaway kind of gets the um, credit for all this because um, it's a simple, easy way to get really, really high quality photos. So we're going to show you that in a second. Um, consistent backgrounds. If you want to do before and afters, and I'm going to show you what we started doing at Maricopa, but before and afters and start showing off case examples for patients, having consistent background is important. Like snapping it in the chair with the headrest cover behind their ears, like just doesn't look good. And so having a consistent background that all your photos are taken is really good for showing your before and afters. Um, and so the photos that are important, you know, for, 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 for design and teeth setting and digital wax ups, um, rest, repose, and most importantly, just the exaggerated smile. Um, so if you're going to get anything and you have one photo to take for setting teeth, it's an exaggerated smile, in, in my hands at least, because... And I say exaggerated because it's not the, you know, that doesn't help you. You can't set teeth on that. You have to get them to smile as if they were finished with their dentistry. Because right? you're trying to put the teeth in their face where they need to be when they're ready to smile. Not their smile pre-op, but where do they smile? So, you know, it's smile, smile bigger, you know, or, or tell a joke or whatever your, your ability is to get them to smile, but if you're going to delegate this to staff, you can't just let them say, okay, smile, okay, that's the pre-op photo, because um, it doesn't give you any information. Like, you have to be able to see size of ledge, eight and nine, you have to be able to see gingival margins or where that falls in an exaggerated smile. And if you're planning hybrids, you know, where's the transition line going to be on an exaggerated smile? Uh, that's important. You know, you don't want to be showing that when you're all done. Um, so that's an important one. Rep repose, that's that incisal display at rest. So you guys remember Dr. Sullivan's? He did a lot on that stuff, on just his photography with repose and you know, the, the distance the lip travels and smile. So repose is really just when they're like resting, how much incisal edge is showing. You know, if they're not showing any, add a little bit. Sometimes that's helpful, you know, creates that youthfulness. I, um, I, um, the, when, I, when I was thinking about repose, I don't know why, the first uh, thing that came to my mind is, um, you guys are watching the Bucks and the Suns, um, Chris Middleton. Like, you guys know who Chris Middleton is? He's just got like, his repose is like, like you just see, you can see above eight and nine, like in repose, and I'm like, how'd you like to do a smile design on that guy? It'd be kind of crazy. Um, and then, you know, re retracted, so uh, I'll show you kind of how we do it. We set the patient up on a background with the lights, exaggerated smile, a repose, and a retracted smile um, at the smile, you know, the photo station. Um, and then occlusal photos, that, that should already be captured on your new patient exams, you know. I mean, ideally, your assistants or hygienists are taking those and you already have those. That's going to be more helpful for diagnosing, like, what kind of dentistry does that tooth need, right? Is it cracked? Is it you know, when you're going back and planning a case, you can reference that, you know, for the type of restoration that the tooth might need. Um, so bonus points for taking photos at the planned vertical. So I wanted to touch base on this because so many of these cases are getting vertically opened. It's, it's not as helpful as it could be if you take the photos at their existing vertical and you plan on needing to open them a lot because sometimes they're existing verticals like this. And so when you go to plan it, you can't, you know, you, you can't idealize, well, hey, I got to open them up. Now where does it need to go? So here's what I would suggest. This is the workflow I would suggest doing is trying to capture all your records for that case at your planned vertical and holding it with composite. So what I would suggest doing is the patient comes in and you're ready to start gathering records. I would start in the chair and I would have, as the doctor come in, you go in and you set the vertical. So if it's a worn case and you want to open them up three, four millimeters, plan that. Do that with the leaf gauge. You know, put the leaf gauge in the front. Find the vertical that you're happy with and then put a little composite in the bicuspid areas or something where they can close onto bilaterally and you can hit it with some light and just have them at that planned vertical 
with composite. And the reason why that's helpful is because now they can move around the office without losing that vertical. If you do that with like blue bite, you can't really take photos with that. If you do it just the leaf gauge and scan only with the leaf gauge, they can't go take photos with that vertical. So in a perfect world, you'd capture your, your intro scan, your photos, your facial scan, and your cone beam at the same vertical. In a perfect world, that's how it would all be done. Because when we, we're going to talk about creating the digital patient or digitizing your patient, you have to stitch all of this data in and overlap it. And if the vertical is different on every single record, what are you going to go off of? And it's not going to, be, it's not going to all play well. So composite is consistent. It just pops off. And you can hold that vertical throughout the whole process. So chair side, you set your vertical with composite. Well, so let's say this. Upper lower, upper lower scans, put the scanner down before you get the bite, then set your vertical with composite, then go capture your bite with your scanner, then send them to go get the photos at the photo station, the comb beam, and then finally like the facial scan. And that way it's the same throughout everything. You have the same vertical and the same bite position for every record. And then it's just predictable. That way, when you look at your photos and they're smiling at that open vertical, now you know where everything is going to sit in their lip position, and it's easy to plan. Any questions on that? Any questions on vertical increase or capturing vertical increase? Um, anybody else have a way that they like to do that? Because typically, like with night guards, I'm just putting a leaf gauge in and just scanning them left and right. But if you want to hold them through, you need something like composite. If you put a little bit on the bicuspids, it's, it doesn't really, doesn't really mess anything up. Cool. All right. So a couple of quick things that I would suggest. I put this on here. I would suggest you guys getting these. Um, Callaway's office brought this, these two products um, in, and I think they're great. And so this is a kit you can get on Amazon. And I'm going to show you a couple of photos in a second. And you can see why, oh man, like once you start seeing photos with good lighting, it, it, everything else just looks subpar. Like the, the lighting makes the photo. It's, it's so important. I mean, I don't know if you guys are you know, into photography or anything. I'm not, but I mean, I can appreciate good lighting on a photo. Um, and the really good dentists, their photos, you see really good lighting. And so the, the ring flashes on our cameras that we use are really good for intraoral photography. But extraoral photography, it's just it's washed out. It doesn't look good. And so what we do is we have a little station set up in our office just for extraoral photos for both before and afters, but also for the diagnosis part. So check out this kit. Um, it's not that expensive. It's, what, like 200 bucks or something? Yeah, something like that. And so you get these big strobe lights or these big, uh, these big strobe lights that these soft boxes go on. And so if you've seen those soft box lightings, uh, soft box lighting, and it, you don't, it's not difficult to use. You don't have to be a, you know, a photographer to, to use this stuff in no settings. It's kind of just set it, maybe tweak it a little bit, turn it on and off. And, and you hook a little piece onto your camera, and then you set the two soft boxes in front of the patient's face and just take the picture. And it looks really, really good. Um, this is same brand, Amazon as well. And this is a backdrop. And it's reversible. So you got black on one side, white on the other. And it can fold up, and you can store it. Or you can just leave it. We have it hung on a wall. So next to our cone beam, we just hung one of these on the wall with the black. I, I prefer black. You, know, you might prefer white. It doesn't really matter. And that's your backdrop. And so you can just, every time photos, patient goes to that section, you got your soft boxes set up right there. Um, you pull them out, you set them up, and you can take pictures pretty quick. The staff can do it, all that stuff. Um, I usually tell the staff, I like the staff to turn the camera vertical. Do you do that as well? Or do you have them take it horizontal? Yeah, for profile shots, yeah. So you get kind of that shoulder to above the head. I'll show you a couple here in a second. Um, and so not hard to do. Your staff can do that. And uh, you know, you got to calibrate them a little bit on things like, hey, the patient was going like this. You, know? you have to teach them what an exaggerated smile looks like or what repose looks like if you want to 
you know, if you want them to take the photos. But it's easy to train them to do that. Um, so we started, we started capturing them for diagnosis, but then we're like, well, these look really cool. You know, then the, the lighting looks so good. So we started printing before and afters and putting them up in the consult room. And again, it's that patient perception. And patients walk in now, and they just sit and stare at this wall. Like, they're with our consult, our treatment coordinator, Brian, and they just sit there, and they just stare at this wall. See all these before and afters and, you know, a bunch of bad teeth and then pretty teeth. And it, it's cool. I mean, patient makes patients think that you're really good at what you do. Um, so get them, and get them for, uh, for dentures, because dentures are an easy full mouth reconstruction. I mean, they just, they always look better. And so take your photos for dentures, because they don't know that it's a denture versus you know, crown and bridge or veneers or whatever. So take them for dentures because those are a really good way to get, get a whole library going and then put them on the wall. So we're going to just keep putting them up on the wall and filling up the wall and fill a whole wall. It makes you look really good, you know, like you know what you're doing. Um, these, I really like these. I don't know if you guys are using these Columbia retractors versus the plastic retractors because you just, are you, are you using these? Yeah. The Columbia retractors? I like these. I mean, they cost a little bit more money, but you know, you buy a couple of pairs and you just autoclave them. They, you, then you don't get that big plastic ring that covers like, it's just very obtrusive, I feel, like that big plastic half retractor when you see that. I just think these are really streamlined and simple. Um, and you just, they're not so distracting when you're pulling back the lips and trying to take photos. Um, I also like using them, throwing them in when I'm taking like a denture impression and you want to bring that impression in without hitting their lip and, and knocking all your impression material down. So like I like to have a patient hold it and then slide the denture in and, and do my, my impression or my wa reline or wash or whatever. So those are, those are three things I would suggest picking up. They've been, they've been good in our practice. Um, here is, so here's kind of what some of the photos look like. And this is without me really knowing anything about like photography. Like I'm sure I could tweak lighting and get, you know, bring out different colors and stuff. But to me, I'm like, cool, they look good. I'm happy. The patients think they're nice. Um, this is a software called DTS Pro. There's a bunch of different digital softwares, but I just grabbed a couple of these. This, this case was cool. I just did this this week where the software literally allows you just to have a little, this is a crown lengthening simulation. And so I just literally, you can just drag the teeth up and it's just built to kind of drag the teeth up and simulate crown lengthening or gingivectomies or whatever your, your treatment modality is. And so, because she was like, I was like, oh, you, should, you know, we finished her braces. And I'm like, you should think about a gum lift. Gum lift is a good patient term. Um, she's like, well, I don't know. What would it look like? I'd feel like I'd have weird teeth. So I'm like, well, let me simulate it. So I just did this and printed it and gave it to my coordinator. And um, yeah, and she was like, oh, pff, yeah, I'm in. That looks great. Just because she saw it. You know, people are visual creatures. And... They need to see things. You can't just say, oh, here's an x-ray. You know, you need veneers on your teeth or implants. Or, it's like they need to see it. That's why photos and wax-ups and printed, you know, mock-ups and shell temps or um, snap-on smiles. That's why that's, they, they get that visual, you know, of, of buying in. And, it'll, and then the software can have a whole library of stock teeth that you can literally just drag into people's smiles. There's, you know, 20 different teeth options. Virtual. Virtual, virtual, yeah, those were simulations. So this is DTS Pro. Um, this is, uh, this, it, it, it's super easy to use. So like, all you do is you just literally open up a photo that you've taken, and it auto calibrates the pupils and the midline, and it auto finds the lips, you know, the lips, and it'll cut out the lips, and then it'll give you the functions of like, dropping in a stock arch of teeth, or manipulating gingiva, whitening teeth. I mean, it's really easy. Like, it's, it's really simple and basic. Um, it's, 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 it is an annual cost software. You get, like, two computer licenses. Um, Blue Sky had a promo on it when we got it. And so, but you got to pay annually, which is not my favorite thing. Uh, but it's a cool software just for doing quick little, like, simulations and I mean if you close a case on it then you're like okay cool kind of paid for itself um, but again without good photos it's you're not going to have the same type of presentation if they're in the chair and the headrest covers on the side it doesn't look as nice as if a really nice black background with good lighting 
So that makes all the difference. Do you ever, ever have a situation where on a DTS Pro it doesn't come out the way it looks? Um, you mean I'm not able to deliver yeah. what, what the patient saw? Yeah. You know, I mean. It's on the bottom right, right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the time, but I'm covered because it says treatment results may vary. Um, yeah, so I mean, this, this isn't something that I use a ton. Uh, but I would, say, I would say that the ability to deliver what you can put on there is not going to be too difficult. Like, for example, crown lengthening. Um, I mean, the, the sky's the limit when it comes to digital dentistry and what you can guide. I mean, if you want to do guided crown lengthening, you can do that. Where, like, you can have a snap-on uh, snap guide with windows for your planned gingival positions and your planned bone contour levels. Like, Sky's the limit. You can design whatever you, whatever you can think of in, in digital dentistry. That's what's so fun about it. Um, so you could predictably maybe deliver exactly the tooth length that you wanted on that case. Um, if, again, you took this photo and the patient liked the, you know, the occlusal plane or whatever, you, know, you can do your wax up to match that and you know, get it as close as you can. But, yeah. OK, we're getting. Involved, yeah. that's involved in financial situation, financial decisions at this level. Yeah. And if they say yes, then try and control that environment. Yep. Ask, ask them to come in and say, could you bring them in? Because if they go home and have this conversation, they're not going to have the conversation effectively. It's so right? true. If you say, come in, bring your spouse, bring your husband, because the wife goes home, hey, doctor says I need to spend 15 grand to redo my mouth, the husband's going to can it and say, I don't want to spend the 15 grand, forget it, he lost it. Mm -hmm. But if you say, bring back your significant other, and let's have a conversation. And then you can take those photos in advance. Yes. And you can have that all done. Huge. So now husband walks in and say, her, her, her teeth's gonna look like that. You're like, dude, sign me up, right? Yep. Because now yep. he's gonna see it and go, yeah. yeah, for sure. Right, I think that's obviously, that would help with your sale. Huge, um, yeah. The presentation, and if you have a few days to do that, why not? Totally. Right? So yeah, I had I had one on that exact lines. You know. The, I asked, that's a, that's a huge question. Who's responsible for making the financial decisions? They go, and if they go, definitely not me, that's my spouse. Why sit that person down in, in, the, in the treatment coordinator's room and show them a $20,000 treatment plan and send it home with them? That's just stupid. You know, don't feel the pressure to have to present same day if the, if the person making the decision isn't even there. So um, yeah, I, I think of one case where you know, I brought, I had time and I gathered all the data that day and I brought the patient back, and I had everything digitized. Their facial scan, the bone, the teeth. And the patient sat down in the office, and we went through the computer and said, here's your face, here's your bone, here's your teeth, here's where the implants would be. And I put some time into it without any, without any um, payment yet. I put a little time into that planning. But that patient was like, whoa, there's my face, 3D. And, the, you know, and you know, they accepted the case because they saw it, and they were you know, wowed by the experience. So, yeah, all of these tools, use them as part of the experience. Yeah. We're, we're in a society where you spend five bucks for a cup of coffee to make yourself, but if you want that nice coffee with your name on it, and it feels like Absolutely. And so it's experience, price, they're all about price until the experience transcends price. Absolutely. So you have to make the experience transcend price, otherwise they're going to be fixated on price. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Until they'll shift gears on you and they don't care about the money anymore. We've all seen that happen. Yep. They come in caring about the money, but then through the conversation, the photos, the education, now they want what you're selling. Yep. Now they don't care about price anymore. Yep. But it's an art to get them there. Yep. Right? Absolutely. So, and we all want to, you know, we all want to work less and make more. You know, and if we want to have our fee schedules set reasonably high to be able to do that, we have to have that experience that does transcend price.